Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Mass Effect 3 Insanity walkthrough. Last time we left off after taking care of some business on Tuchanka, and we also still have one mission left to complete on the Krogan homeworld, but that one has to wait until the next episode, as today we are returning to the Citadel. And with that, let us jump right into things. We have two quick intergalactic pit stops to make before we can dock on the Citadel. Our first one is actually already marked and it lies in the Kite's Nest. Now in here we have already fully surveyed the Harsa and Untral systems. However, there is now also a third one available. And that is exactly where we want to go in order to get the Blue Sun's mercenaries on our side. I found something. And again, the location of the quest item here is already marked and therefore impossible to miss. We are looking to obtain some rare black market artifacts here, which we want to give to a weapons merchant back on the Citadel. In exchange, the merchant promises to supply c General Oraka with some much needed weaponry to protect the Citadel, allowing Oraka himself to lay off his pressure on the Blue Suns, who have been compromising weapon shipments. On top of that, we can also secure some fuel, allowing us to safely make the return trip back to the mass relay, although, as I have shown you before, getting back there is never a problem. Still, we don't want to abuse the game's failsafe mechanics too much and calculate our fuel reserves according to the trips we need to make. And speaking of which, from here we are now traveling all the way over to the other side of the galaxy, to the Isma frontier. Completing this cluster though is a rather quick affair. Signal confirmed. We only have one asset to obtain and it is located on the gas giant Metaponto, although technically we are unlocking two things here as the advanced biotic implants here are needed to complete another quest and can also be used back on the Normandy's intel terminal for a small upgrade. That is all the survey work completed though, so it's time to visit the Citadel. As you can see, we also still have the options here to start two DLC missions, but we want to hold off on those for just a little while longer, so for the time being, the Alliance docks are our destination. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Do you need ground transport? And indeed, this time we take advantage of this service and start things off right in the refugee camps. I need to get to the refugee camp. Yes, Commander. Now, we actually don't really have that much to do down here. At the moment, there is only one single person in this area who has something new to say to us, but over the last few episodes we have gathered quite some money, so let us now spend some of that. However, we are only grabbing the shotgun blade attachment and the assault rifle omniblade here. To be honest, we probably don't even need those, but this is a completionist playthrough. We will not fork over the 50,000 credits for the Terminus armor just yet though. At least for now, I think we have a few more useful things to spend our money on. Before we continue our shopping spree though, let's head over to the next container bay and talk to a much different looking Kelly Chambers. Well, I followed your advice. What do you think of my new look? And no morality points here, although we can't really keep things fully professional either way. So let's go with the option that is perhaps not too on the nose. It's a shame you need a disguise. I liked your old look. Me too. But sacrifices must be made. Kelly Chambers is no more. Citadel records now show me as Felicia Hannigan of the mining vessel Typhoon. Pleased to meet you, Felicia. No, you can call me Kelly. These refugees have no place to go. All right, and that almost completes things down here. We can, however, get one more short line from the Solarian Sane, who, thanks to our efforts, is now leader of the Eclipse. Hey, I've assumed full control of the Eclipse, and we're committed to moving forward with Arya. And that is indeed nice to hear, and also marks the point where we can head back to the elevator. Our next destination, the Citadel Embassies, where we will spend even less time, as we are only looking to talk to Ambassador Osoba. He asked us to investigate the disappearance of his son on Benning, and unfortunately we have some bad news to share with him, as the only thing we found on Benning was Bilal Osoba's dead body. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select a destination. One moment, please. Now arriving at Presidium Embassy. 
Have you found my son? I found your son's body in the slums on Benning. He sacrificed himself to save his squad. I... Uh, see. Their guilt made them avoid me. They should feel honored by his sacrifice. I... I know that I do. Thank you, my friend. Alright, and that is another small side quest completed. Back to the elevator we go, with our next stop being the Huerta Memorial Hospital. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select a destination. One moment, please. Now arriving at Huerta Memorial Hospital. And just like in the refugee camps, we can do some more shopping here. Welcome to Serta. And with 10,000 credits, we can further increase our Medigel capacity. Thank you for coming to Serta. How can we help you? Thank you for shopping. And with that, it's almost time to talk to Caden again. But first, let's ask the doctor how he's doing. Hello again, Commander. You're to see our patient? How is Caden doing? Very well. With the neural redundancies of his L2 implants, his concussion is nearly undetectable now. I still want to keep him under observation, but he should be fit for duty soon. Keep up the good work, Doctor. You too, Commander. Alright, moving on, it is now time to turn in that quest that we went to the Isma Frontier for, because right here in the hospital we overheard a Solarian complaining about some missing prototypes, and it just so happens that we now have those. I believe you were looking for these prototypes? You found them? Thank you. These biotic upgrades will save a lot of Alliance lives. We'll begin production immediately. Here, for your trouble. Okay, and while it is actually not quite clear what we do in fact receive for our troubles, except for the 90 experience points, let us not dwell on that for too long and instead have a chat with Caden. Hey, Shepard. If you came to spring me, you're late. I'm getting out soon. Good to hear. Maybe you already saw the vid, but I accepted Udina's offer. Spectre Caden Olenko. That's a big deal. Only the second human Spectre. <laughs> it's humbling. Udina thinks they may have a pretty big ceremony, even with the war. And he says a celebration will give folks something hopeful to latch onto. You ready to take on that responsibility? You set the bar pretty high, but I'll do my best. It's strange. On Mars, I should have died. The promotion from Anderson, Spectre status. These are terrible days. But I've been lucky. Once again then, no morality points here, but both options are very positive indeed. So we might as well go all out with our admiration. You're perfect for the job. On Eden Prime I could see there was something special about you. You're a good soldier. That means a lot. I'm happy. I want to serve. I thought you might want to join the Normandy. Yeah, I have thought about that. I just need to get out of here first, though. Take care of some things. I've been trying to locate my old spec op squads. My students from Biotics Division. Any luck? No, probably went underground, but they'll turn up. If they were easy to find, they wouldn't be doing their jobs. Well, let me know when you're out. Take care, Specter Olenko. Stay safe, Commander. And that we will, although not before checking in with the Solarian for one more time. Uh, the timeline is reasonable? Excellent. No, not at all. I'm just glad we'll be able to help your people. Alright, and that is our business in the hospital concluded as well. Former squad member Thane is still here by the way, but unfortunately he does not have anything new to say to us at this point. So instead, let us now make our way to the Presidium Commons, where we will for a change spend a bit more time. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select a destination. One moment, please. Now arriving at Presidium Commons. And you probably know it already, this is where the shopping happens. Welcome to Kanala Exports. So, to get us started, we will empty out most of the inventory of Kanala Exports. We can also purchase the striped starfish here, another addition to Shepard's Aquarium, which we do of course want to fully complete in this series as well. Once again though, we will leave the armors for now, as they are a bit more on the pricey side and not super useful. At Kanala Exports, we believe that a peaceful heart is a strong heart. 
We appreciate your visit. Following that, we can now have a quick chat with Balavon. I rescued those soldiers from Reaper territory. Excellent work. I've been asked to offer you part of my finder's fee from the mercenary's employer. And now that our business is concluded, I have to tend to some other engagements. Goodbye, Commander. And may I say, good luck. Alright, another small side quest completed and the associated war asset is actually already ours for quite some time now. Up next, we can now purchase a few more items, including the e -Jail Thermal Conduit, or more commonly referred to as the Thermal Pipe that Engineer Adams has requested. So that quest will be completed here today as well, and following this episode, we also no longer have to worry about feeding our fish, which I have actually taken care of in between episodes up until now, as the Aquarium VI for 25,000 credits will automate that process for us. Again then, no armor purchases at this point, instead we can head all the way over to the other side of the area, where the weapons merchant for the Blue Suns questline is located. Before we talk to him though, we can make a few more acquisitions. Our shopping spree today will actually empty out every single shop here on the Citadel of every available item that is not an armor, although as the game progresses some shops will actually receive new stock, so we are far from done spending our hard-earned credits. Welcome to Agor Munitions. 16,000 more now go into the pocket of Agor Munitions as we grab an SMG heatsink and ultralight materials for assault rifles, snipers and shotguns, and we are still not done. Remember, all purchases made by Agor Munitions will show in your credit report as AM Trading Limited. Before we continue, however, let's make a weapons deal. Here, I've got some pieces. Done deal, Commander. Check in with General Oraka. You'll see I'm making CSEC very happy. Alright, so we have procured some weapons for CSEC, and with that the Blue Suns should be willing to join Arya's command and in turn our fight against the Reapers. Two more quick purchases now at the Cypertine Armory shop and then we can move on to the last two shopping terminals of the episode, but the best in terms of conversations is arguably yet to come. At Nos Astro Sporting Goods, we can once again skip the armor suit and go for the much less expensive stuff for now. Ultimately though, we do of course want to buy and also wear every suit of armor at least once. Not to mention that there is actually also an achievement to be unlocked for acquiring two suits of non-customizable armor and basically everything we have seen so far falls into that category. The Casa Fabrication Store is now the final stop in our spending spree and it will actually more or less empty us out. Next to various weapon attachments, we can also find a pair of gauntlets here that increase power recharge speed, so not that useful for a soldier class shepherd, and for the completionists among us, we also want to make sure to grab the two ship models to eventually complete the collection in Shepard's cabin. And that's it, time to turn in another small quest, as we have picked up the last words of a dying Krogan a few episodes ago. Thank you for shopping at Casa Fabrication Weaponry. Welcome to the Citadel. Excuse me. I'm sorry. You need to hear this. Of Helium. If these humble words reach you, then I have joined my ancestors. No. No, no, no. My dream was to be by your side, a weed beside your beauty, twining together in the warm Tachanka sun. Oh, Char. But if my last days must be with Krant instead of kindness, still. I will remember the perfume of your scent and the soft touch of your petals. Let my broken bones build a wall around your garden so you and the flower we planted together can grow safe and strong. Thank you. Uh, I should... I need to go. And yes, you might remember these two from Mass Effect 2, the Blue Rose of Ilium quest might sound familiar, but we have no time to dwell on the sad ending of this story and can instead now talk to General Oraka. Commander Shepard, I was just contacted by a black market dealer who's donating high-end weapons to CSEC. He wanted you to know. Sounds like you came through. And the Blue Suns can go about their business. Now we'll be focusing on Citadel defense. It won't bring Palavan back, but it's something. Thank you, Commander. Alright, and with that, the Blue Suns will now hopefully hold up their end of the bargain. In any case, we should probably talk to Arya soon. Before we do that though, let's have a drink. 
Hey, I remember you. Shepard, right? Heard you're fighting the Reapers. Matriarch Athena. You were working on Ilium. How'd you end up here? Nah. With the Reapers making noise, I figured it was time to get somewhere safer. So I moved here. I don't think so. I've seen some video footage of you looking at Liara. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> Matriarch Benazio was, um, was her mother. Now, unfortunately, the second, much more interesting part of her voice line always gets cut off for me, so we don't hear her reveal that she is in fact Liara's father. You mean you were her other mother, right? No, I didn't pop her out. Hell, she's never even met me. Sorry, if you were human, you'd both be called the mother, regardless of which one gave birth. Well, I'm not human, am I? Anthropocentric bag of dicks. Two Paragon points can now be obtained by nudging her in the right direction, and we will earn a few more morality points from a Paragon and a Renegade interrupt in a few seconds as well. Liara would love to meet you. Why? She doesn't even know me from a hole in the ground. Benezia ran off before the kid was born. Besides, this isn't charity work. She's one of the biggest intel brokers in the galaxy. And she's got some shady connections. Like a boyfriend who used to work for Cerberus. I only worked with Cerberus to fight the Reapers. And you're not with him now, I know. If you were, you wouldn't get within a light year of Liara. Is that a threat? I'm no commando, but I've had a thousand years to learn to fight dirty. Nobody messes with my girl. Anyway, you combine her work with Benazia and... Well, the matriarchs might have ordered a hit. That's not gonna happen. No argument here. I only took these crap jobs to keep the matriarchs happy that she's under control. Just as long as we're clear, nobody messes with my girl. <laughs> Maybe you're good enough for her after all. I bet she'd like to meet you. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so it seems like we have the Matriarch on board, so now it's only a matter of convincing Liara. The bartender over there? The Matriarch hired by the Asari government to track my movements? She's your father. I know. And yes, is it really a surprise that she already knows all of this? I don't think so, so we might as well go with the corresponding dialogue option. I never get to surprise you with anything. I'm a very good information broker. And you haven't talked to her about spying on you? If I did that, they might send someone who wasn't as sympathetic to me. Besides, this is hardly the time for family reunions. Now, we don't get any morality points from this conversation, but let's press the issue a little bit more, as the result is actually quite interesting. Liara. Oh, fine. And there she goes, let's follow and hear what the two of them are talking about. Come on, you can't blame the matriarchs for keeping an eye on you. I am not my mother. Mm, you did threaten to flay someone alive with your mind. I had to make them take me seriously. I wasn't going to actually do it. And you bugged my office on Ilium. That'd be the logical conclusion. Yeah, the matriarchs aren't going to do anything to you, especially in the middle of this damn war. My reports don't show much activity from the Asari military against the Reapers. Come on, you know how Asari work, infiltration and sabotage. But against Reaper forces, that's... I know, about as useful as tits on a Hanar. Good thing we've got the Turians and the Krogan to do the heavy lifting. Our people just aren't built for the front ranks. So, yeah, my dad was a Krogan. Yes, I'm aware of that. So, that makes you a quarter Krogan. That's not how it works. I'm a thousand years old. 
I've had kids with Hanar. Don't tell me how a sorry reproduction works. Wait. I have a half-sister who's part Hanar. I thought that wasn't how it worked. All I'm saying is, if you feel the urge to headbutt something, it's genetic. I have never wanted to headbutt anything. Really? Not even a little bit? Come on. I do not headbutt people. All right, fine. Don't go all blood rage on me. Or what? You'll tell the other matriarchs to order a hit. Hey, that's not going to happen. Nazi and I were together for more than a century. You loved her? Of course I loved her. She was so smart. Always thinking. Nice, too. Hell of a lot nicer than I am. And damn, that rack. I mean, even before she hit the matriarch stage. You don't need to tell me everything. Nazi was the only one who ever listened to me when I said the Asari were stuck in the past. Only difference was I wanted us to stand on her own. She wanted alliances with the other species. Is that why? Why it ended? Nah. <laughs> well, maybe. I don't know. Mostly it ended because she wanted to solve things a smart way. I wanted to fight. Those aren't mutually exclusive. Yeah. I hear you've racked up quite a body count. But then, you are a quarter Krogan. Now you're doing it on purpose. It was pretty clear she was leaving. Can't be the wise counselor when you're married. Why not? Sex appeal. No species only pay attention if they want to have sex with you. So, you have to be available. Mysterious? What? That's not true. Shepard listens to me. And how many times have you popped his thermal clip? Do you have to make it sound so tawdry? If it's all civilized, you're not doing it right. I made her promise to let you go your own way, though. No matter what she wanted. Really? I knew you'd be special, kid. Any daughter of hers. I told her, you're treating her like a baby bird, Nezzy. She's gonna raise one hell of a storm with those little wings. Little wing? You okay? Yes. Thanks. Better to remember her like this than as whatever she turned into with that Saren bastard. It wasn't her fault. She was trying to stop Saren, guide him as a force of good. But she was indoctrinated. Look, I heard stories about the Reapers messing with your head. They're more than stories. I've seen it. Every Cerberus soldier is a Reaper slave. She fought it with every fiber of her being. She even broke free and helped Shepard on Novaria before she died. I was there. She said I'd made her proud. All this time, I blame Nezzy for it. A thousand years old and I still don't know crap. Thanks for telling me. Take care of yourself out there, okay, kid? I will, Dad. Hey, <clears throat> I've called a few friends. Commandos. Eclipse girls who uh, owe me some favors. They're all yours. Just tell them where to go. You're giving me a sorry commandos? Well, you're too old for me to buy you a damn pony. You're the best father a girl could wish for. And there we go, a few lovely conversations here that I simply did not want you to miss out on, as they add so much to Liara's backstory that has never even been hinted at before. For now though, we have exhausted all of the dialogue between the two of them, and it is in fact also time to leave the Presidium Commons for good. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select a destination. One moment, please. Now arriving at ward level Purgatory. Our next and final stop here on the Citadel is now the Purgatory Bar, where we will have a short conversation with Arya. After all, we did all of her biddings and recruited the Blood Pack, the Eclipse and now also the Blue Suns to her cause, so let's hope that she can confirm that the mercenaries now stand united at our disposal. Look who's here. The Blue Suns, Blood Pack and Eclipse are in my pocket. I'll send them to war when you're ready for them. Is 
there anything on your mind? And yes indeed, let's ask her about what we have gained, as Arya should be more than familiar with the intricacies of the three mercenary groups. What exactly have I acquired? An army that's willing to fight dirty, to do the things your respectable militaries won't do. Eclipse Max and Vorcha legions are excellent candidates for vanguards in any ground offensive. Well worth the little song and dance I had you perform, I'm sure. Are the Blood Pack falling in line? With Grill in charge, where all systems go. It's his voice, but my words. Couldn't have asked for a better puppet. The Blood Pack have committed 2,000 Vorcha to the cause. They'll make up the bulk of the army. Is Darner Boss cooperating with you now? Getting General Araka off the Blue Sun's back did the trick. Voss still thinks he'll be getting me on mine, idiot. But he's committed his veteran soldiers to me. In turn, I commit them to you. What have we gained by having the Eclipse at our disposal? A ton of mechs and elite troopers for stealth operations. Sane has turned out to be more malleable than Jonas Sedaris ever was. My control of Eclipse runs even deeper than I expected. You surprised me by taking such agency in the matter. Alright, sounds like we have gained quite the small army, so no need to bother her any longer. We'll talk later. I'm sure. At this point, we are now more or less done with the Citadel for now. Only one more small side quest remains, as we have collected some power grid schematics in the cannon control center onto Chanka during our fight against Cerberus, and we do in fact have someone standing right outside of the bar here who might have some use for them. Don't mean to interrupt you, but I found these schematics. They're pretty old, but maybe they could help you? Oh, those really are old, but solid. We could totally convert our current systems to this. Thanks. I'm almost done with the system upgrade. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be amazing. Hey, could we maybe give a portion of our profits to a Krogan charity? I mean, it's old, but we are using their tech, right? And there we are, another side quest completed, another war asset obtained, and we can now use the Citadel Rapid Transit Terminal over here to return straight to the Normandy. Back on board, we now also only have two more stops to make, the first one being on the crew deck, more specifically in Liara's office, but don't get your hopes up, despite just meeting her father, she does not actually have that much to say. Excellent find, Commander. The information network terminal has been updated. In fact, the main reason we came here is to grab another upgrade from the Intel terminal, where the advanced biotic implants we collected at the beginning of the episode will now be turned into a power cooldown bonus. Most of the biotic powers we use are for crowd control instead of damage, so I think being able to use them as often as possible makes the most sense. Feel free to look around. And yes indeed, that is all that Liara has for us at the moment. A bit disappointing considering who she just met, but until we complete the next mission, this is all we can get out of her. In the meantime, we have also just acquired some thermal pipe for our engineers, so let's see if they're able to put it to good use. Thanks, Commander. That GX-12 thermal pipe arrived. We're performing the modifications right now. So, how did I get volunteered to crawl through the ducts? You're the power control engineer, not me. Damn hot in here. Hey, didn't Adam say that all the Normandy is Edie? Kenneth, stop right there. Just didn't tell Joker. He'll get jealous. Kenneth is still installing the thermal conduit down in the crawl space. We'll have a report later. We're still working on the thermal modifications. Should be done pretty soon. Alright, looks like things are moving along nicely down here, and this is in fact also all that we can do at the moment. At this point, there really isn't anything else left for us to do except to return to Tuchanka to finally cure the Genophage, which will hopefully be enough to get the Krogan on board and secure their help for the Turians. Whether or not that plan will work as intended, that is something we will find out together next time. For today, I think we have reached a good point to make the cut. As always, if you have enjoyed the episode, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.